I'm joined now by Nina Ansari, who's an Iranian-American historian and author. Good evening to you. Good to have you with us to discuss all of this. Um, let's speak, first of all, about uh, uh, the people you've managed to speak to inside Iran. What are they telling you about what they're going through and what they're seeing? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, the uh, communication I've had directly with people on the ground floor in Iran is that they want this regime gone. This is a drastically different narrative than a few years ago when people in Iran were protesting, and that was specifically because of the high cost of living and increase in gasoline prices. Today, that narrative and landscape have shifted to wanting regime change. People are chanting death to the dictator, no to the Islamic Republic, and undertaking unprecedented types of action, such as even high school girls taking off their mandatory hijabs and chanting death to the dictators. Yeah, uh, let's break some of that down. This is not just about the mandatory hijab, which led to the, the death of Masa Amini. It, it's also so much more, isn't it? It's about human rights in Iran, and it's about uh, people wanting the change now. Yes, this has gone beyond the veil, as, as you said, beyond the mandatory veiling laws. This has gone uh, people wanting, longing for normality, longing for freedom, longing for basic rights, this uh, uh, was sparked by Masa Amini's horrific death, but has now gone on into Iranian civil society as a whole. It is a women-led movement, but Iranian civil society has reached the end of its road. As far as they're concerned, they no longer want this regime in power and they want change. And the international community can either stay silent or help the Iranian people achieve freedom. Yeah, it's interesting you mention that because we saw the Swedish Iraqi MEP and we spoke to her earlier on Sky News today who, who cut her hair while standing in Parliament. We have that on our screens right now. Um, a, a real, really powerful message to the international community to act. We've also seen that symbolic cutting of hair from celebrities too. But beyond the symbolism, what can people do to help Iran and, and help, as you say, not just the women there, because the men are also standing up uh, against this regime now? Well, what's needed is decisive action. And I can walk you through a few of them. Namely, the international law practitioners need to assess whether and in which manner the international law community can come together in order to support compliance with human rights and establishing the rule of law in Iran. Furthermore, what's missing and needs to be set up are independent international investigative mechanism to address the prevailing crisis of impunity in Iran, which over the years has bold, emboldened the regime to continue its atrocities against its own people. And back to how this all started and the women of Iran, um, seeing very powerful imagery of the schoolgirls removing, which must take incredible bravery. As a Muslim woman myself, you know, I know how hard it can be for women to remove their hijabs. Um, schoolgirls taking their hijabs off in protest, um, other women doing so too. How hard is it for Iranian women to go about their daily lives and their ambitions to achieve their goals under this regime? How hard has it been for them over the decades? What is, what is most remarkable is that despite uh, an inferior status, a systemic gender discrimination that has been enshrined and codified within the Islamic constitution and the Islamic civil code, women in Iran have made unprecedented and remarkable gains, specifically owed to their own resilience and determination. You have a country now that despite all the gender discriminatory obstacles, women outnumber men in higher education and have done so by decades. Currently, women comprise 65% of university graduates. They have also excelled despite their circumstances in practically every field. Again, a testament to their resilience and determination. They have become award-winning authors, scientists, and even the first woman to ever win the Fields Medal, which was also known as the Nobel Prize of Mathematics. The late Professor Maryam Mirzakhani was a woman born 
and raised within this patriarchal climate. So these women not only serve as role models for women in other oppressed nations, but they also show the extent to which they are unwilling to subscribe to the gender ideology and the extent to which they've been resisting the gender ideology advocated by the current regime. Uh, and very briefly, Dr. Ansari, um, finally, what are you hoping for in the coming days and weeks? What I'm hoping for is for decisive action to be taken by the international community in order to help Iranian people achieve their quest for freedom. Uh, these protests have been continuously shut down uh, by violent crackdown. Uh, that is uh, something that has not been decisively taken care of and addressed again by world leaders. I don't believe sanctioning Islamic Republic authorities will work. It has not worked. I don't believe enforcing travel bans. The European Union just announced that they were considering creating travel bans and also blocking the assets of some of Islamic Republic officials that have been criminally culpable in assisting and participating in the bloody crackdowns over the last few weeks. I don't believe that those things will be instrumental uh, in terms of holding the regime accountable for its atrocities. I think more decisive actions like the ones I delineated would be the best case approach in terms of helping Iranians achieve their overall objectives. Dr. Nina Ansari, Iranian-American historian and author on women's equity in Iran. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.